Hi, welcome to the Antibuckle video tutorial on Affinity Photo and the Diffuse Glow. Now it's a blur filter, you can find it in the blur section, and I'm just gonna show you, what does it do? It makes, broadens the highlights, makes everything really quite, like looks like it makes it snow, real sort of dreamy sort of glow to it. That's the intention anyway, it just basically makes everything look quite bright, really blows everything out, which maybe, so you can create like a complete blizzard there, Completely doing changing that, so you can yeah you, know, you can virtually wipe everything out. If that's your intention, it's quite a useful filter. So where can you find it? Well, one you can find it in a non-destructive way via here layer new life filter layer blur and go down to diffuse glow. One thing with Affinity, they put all the different locations in different places, so it's right down the bottom. Very strange because if you go to filters and you go to blur diffuse glow, it's right at the top. There's no logic to it as far as I can see. Maybe someone's got a logic to it, but I would have thought be consistent. Need to work, it needs a layer, so I'm using a pixel layer at the moment. So diffuse glow. And you can see you've got some bright, quite light there, you've got some light there, you've got some of these windows, and you've got some other places that are quite light, and obviously there's so as soon as you apply, now you think, oh, I can just push the values up. Well, actually, to be honest, this filter works best with the threshold going down. Sort of slightly counter. So put the threshold down and then change it and then tweak it. And you can see the effect. So it does, it's a combination of all these filters, but threshold needs to be a bit low. If you've got it like that, you probably won't get hardly, which you may want. Maybe you'll get a very subtle. So you can sort of create a very subtle because there's obviously the threshold so high. If you reduce it down, you can see as you do that. Just there, you've got quite light there, and you've got light there, you can see it just coming in, and it's more and more as you go lower and lower. So you've got that. So you can have, and also you can modify the radius. So you can sort of just obviously intensify it, just, and that's just using a 0.3. If you push it up to seven, you can get a sort of more blurry effect like that, which sort of dreamy look. But again, it just looks like more sort of maybe fog drifting along the street kind of thing. It's possible. And you can change the opacity so you can reduce it down, make the fog look a little less. But there's obviously some things you can do with this to create some very interesting designs. So just click apply. Now with all the filters, what you can do, you can always go to a layer and you can fade diffuse glow. Also you can do repeat diffuse glow if you want to apply it again. But I'm just going to go for layer and fade diffuse glow. So what does that do? Well, it means it, so you can get the full, full on effect, or you can just reduce it back down. And you can go through these things. So it, I quite often, I just, I'm more often go backwards and forwards, perfectly happy just to go with that. And you can see that doesn't seem to do much. So it actually works best to fade it down like that. And then go with there, or maybe go to 50% and then go through the different hard light and whatever. But to be honest, it doesn't actually get rid of this glow. It doesn't sort of, so if you go difference, you end up getting this sort of weird effect, which is, is unusual, but you've still got the glow. It doesn't really fade that away. You see none of those settings to get rid of it at all. So you're stuck with that fight, that sort of weird fog but even in difference. So you can do that. Click apply, just makes it a bit darker. So what else can you do? Well, you've got that, but you can also use it, obviously multiple times, as I just mentioned, so you can go over here and you can go to filters and you can repeat. Now what happens, obviously you've got very light, bright, and you can repeat it again, and you will see the, obviously the snow's getting worse in Maidstone, just getting, coming further and further. And obviously it's getting more concentrated as well, so you can, but some areas are totally untouched. It just doesn't touch those at all. But the buildings, everything, you've got that shape suddenly disappearing. Now, what you can also do, you can go to channels. So view and studio and channels. You can do that. And I'm just gonna go there. And then I'm gonna go for red. Select red. So I can go repeat diffuse glow. So it's just applied just to the red channel. So if I go back, just go there go back and you can see you've got a slight red glowing fog 
or whatever it is missed. Or you can go for composite grain and you can go to filters. We go down to distort, I will diffuse glow. You can see you can change that. Maybe for the green, you can maybe really make it intense. Click apply and then go back again. And you can see then you get this really horrible gooey sort of, which I think if you want that sort of gooey, horrible green ugh, slime, then that effect is quite handy. So that's the way of doing that, creating that sort of very sort of ugh, HP Lovecraftian. That's the best way of describing it. I think that sort of weird sort of glow. That's the sort of glow you would not want to walk down the street. If you saw that, I'd be running the other way. I'd be thinking, that's either kryptonite or it's something else. So it's just, let's get rid of that one. So what you can also do, you can apply on a layer. So if you want, you just say layer and you can duplicate. So you duplicate now, I've got two layers now. And of course, there's not really a huge amount of difference, but let's go for filters and again blur and go down to diffuse glow. I might even say it right. Oh, I'm in the red channel. I can see that I must be just, sometimes you forget. You've got all those active. Now let's just go back, filters, blur and diffuse. Now it's applied to there. And you can see that, and again, you can change the threshold. And now you can see it really goes. It's weird how layers, on a layer, it seems to be slightly different from the image. So if you want to create some very unusual designs, now obviously you reduce the radius again down, you can create some very, very, and, you, and again, you change your opacity if you want to reduce it really down, or just keep it like that. But then, now the trouble with this, of course, is white. So in terms of blends and all those sort of things, click apply. What you can do, layers, you got here, you got, you can see there's not so much in terms of on offer because of course you've just got white. Say so difference, it's, it's not so effective. But I just wanted to quickly show you, you can combine it as a layer. And of course you can create multiple layers and you can create some very weird, and that's just by holding down the alter option key. And you can see with that glow, the dreaminess, and you've got these multiple sort of images across it, you can create some very unusual photographic effects, I think, looking like that. That does look pretty odd. Okay, so once you've done that, another thing you can do, you can use, let's just get rid of that, you can use selections as well. Good old selections, and I'm just gonna go over here, and you can use other selections as well from here. But there's also, of course, selections here. So I'm going to use freehand. Don't have to use freehand. And I'm just going to randomly go around some areas. And you go up here, you've got mode. You can go to add. So if you want to extend your selection a bit, just go to add and say, go around there and around there, maybe around there. I'm just choosing just bits and pieces of it. And you've got this selection. So what you can do, you can go to filters, blur, and diffuse glow. And you can see it's just applied to that. You can see you can change that threshold. Apply. And then, of course, you can go select and deselect. So you've got rid of that. But you've got sort of an unusual, just maybe snow or mist in particular areas of the picture, if that's what you wanted to achieve. Now, these, this doesn't work super well with shapes. I guess if you had a shape with a pattern in it, then it probably would work. So if you go over here, and I'm just gonna create donut, say donut, you can apply diffuse, but of course, because it's a solid color, it's not so effective, but it's quite possible what you can do. Of course, you could always create a gradient, or there's gradient, so you can just quickly set a gradient. So you've got a bit more to work with. There. Something like that, and then create a donut. So with that donut, then go to filters and blur. We we'll go down to distort. No, because of diffuse. <laughs> this always seems some weird reason seems to be I always want it to be in distort. Very strange. But you can see it does sort of work, but it's not really very effective. I'm just you can see it sort of you get that sort of effect, which may be maybe what you want, but it's just. That's, it's a fairly image. And likewise, obviously, with type. The type, again, has the same problem. Since most type, of course, is just like type, black, or whatever. It's just not going to be super effective 
to actually apply any effects there. Now, what you can also do, you can use this with pattern layers. I think pattern layers are a real great feature that's come about in recent versions of Affinity Photo. So what you can do, you can go to a layer. Now you can apply, of course, the effect earlier, or you can just go, just leave it like this now, and then go down to this new pattern layer from selection. Now you could use a selection like freehand selection, perfectly reasonable, or you can use the whole layer. You got that design. Now, only recently I've just noticed that, let's select where is there, it's down there. There's a mirror option. You know, it's, sometimes there's a little control, just slightly obscure, off center, you're sort of focusing on this. Suddenly, that right at the top, with this selected, with that pattern layer selected, you can select mirror, which actually is super more effective. Weird, I've been using this for about X number of weeks now, and I hadn't noticed it. But anyway. There's your mirror design. Now what you can do, you can of course use the diffuse with that. So filters, blur, diffuse glow, and then it really gain probably a bit of threshold, and you can see the design there. You can just vary the thing there and change the intensity. And opacity as well, apply. And you can see it's applied to there, and you've got that snow effect, but now it's spread over these tiles, which I think is quite a nice effect actually because of the combination there. But what you can also do, of course, you can always go to layer and you can rasterize the layer. So the rasterize, this is now completely one solid thing, not a pattern anymore. What you can then do is you can go, of course, to filters and if you want to, you can apply the same thing or go to blur and diffuse glow. I think the reason is for me, I always go to distort because I use distort more often than anything. So I must have blurs, something I don't use as much. So I just get flying past it and then I think, oh no, it's in there. And you can see you can vary the threshold again and change your opacity and you can change your radius. So you can create a sort of dreamy tile design as well. Now, what you can also do, let's just go back. Now I'm just, I might as well use the pattern as good as anything. What you can do, you can also add, and this is the great thing about this, live filter layer. Not every single filter has a live filter layer. What does that mean? It means it's non-destructive. You can remove it at any point. So layer and go down to live filter layer. Now also, I should point out, you can also use new adjustment layers with the diffuse as well. Just put it on top and just tweak it so you can change things, maybe you know, modify it in slight ways, maybe black and white. If you, that's what you want. However, right, let's get to new there and blur. And again, let's say it's down the bottom now. They always move it, so diffuse glow. And you can see the effect there. You can change the radius, change intensity. You can change the threshold and you can see the opacity as well. So you can really blur it. So now, what you can also do is called darken and you can see some of the blending modes are actually quite effective. You can go for some very unusual, and there's quite a few in this, of course, average. That one's quite good, negation. So there you are with a light. And the good thing about this, of course, is when you go there, you've got it above and it's applied to this layer. So maybe you don't want it on that. Maybe you just go over here and you can remove this pattern layer. Now you can see the effect is just applied to this background. And you can always just drag it down. Do it carefully now. Just unlock that. Unlock it, drag that down. And now you can see it's added only to that layer. So if you've got multiple layers, you could have different effects. So again, just go here and you go to layer and duplicate. So you've got two now, obviously with this, and I'm just gonna use a different blending mode. So lighten, you can run through those. Now that's for the layer, not for the effect. And then you can go to there and again, double click and it brings up the panel again. And then you can go through here Instead of using that one, you can use some of the others. So you can create a whole range of different designs by combining multiple layers, multiple different blending modes, and different radiuses and different intensities. And let's change the threshold. And also there. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always adding new tutorials all the time about Photoshop, Finity Photo, Finity Designer, Illustrator, and many others. Also, please subscribe to Graphic Extra's channel. Always adding near off every day. Also, any comments?
things that I did wrong, things I did right. Maybe you've got some additional things about this filter that you, you use in a particular way. Please let me know. It'd be always great to find out what other things can you do with it. Also, a dislike or like. Always appreciated. Thank you much.